In our previous video, we made a simple XSD stub and we married it up to an XML file. In this video, we're going to fill out more of the details of that XSD stub. We're going to add several of the elements here in our plant places XML definition. So let's get started. We want to make the document, we want to make our XSD reflect this XML definition. So we know that our root element called plant has a genus, species, cultivar, common name, and several other options as well. We're going to focus on these top four, genus, species, cultivar, common name, which is the scientific definition of a plant. So uh, I go back to the XSD, and because plant can contain other elements, it's what we're going to call a complex type. So let's say uh, XS, sorry, XS colon complex type. Okay. And uh, you see it closes, which is quite nice for it to auto close for me. Within complex type, I'm going to say XS colon sequence. Okay. Now what sequence means is that the elements inside of sequence have to follow in the specified order. So they have to go in that sequence. So these two different tags, mean two different things. Complex type, I'm made of several elements. Sequence, those elements must fall in this sequence. So they mean different things, but they're very closely related. Now, within this sequence, we can make some simple elements. A simple element is just like we saw here with genus, where the only child this element has is text. And by child, I mean the only thing that can come between the open tag and the closed tag is text. That's a simple type. Now take a look at plant. You see we have the open tag for plant here and the closed tag here. And you see within that open and closed tag, we have a bit of text. We have an element. Inside of the element, we have more text. So that's the difference between a complex and a simple type. So in any case, within XS sequence, let's say XS colon element, okay? And let's say name equals, and then we'll say genus, okay? And then uh, double quote, because it's an attribute value, we'll say type equals, and we'll say xs colon string. And close, and we'll close the tag like so. So we'll say genus, you notice how fast that was. I can simply du duplicate it a few more times, and we can handle species, and then we can handle cultivar, and then we can handle common underscore name. We're not doing any validation besides just saying it should be a string. Uh, don't worry, validation will come later. So I save and navigate back to plants XML. We already have genus here. Uh, let's just do a quick validation, make sure that this validates against our XSD file. Validate name, okay, just a moment. Missing child elements, expected is species. Okay, now that's really interesting because you see it didn't give me a failure on genus. It only gave me a failure on species. And that's because I haven't told it whether species is required or not. So if we look at our document, we see that species is not required. So what we can do then is we can say min occurs equals zero, and that effectively means species is not required. Let's try one more time. So plugins, and we'll do validate now again. Now we still get an error message, but take a look, the error message is just subtly different. Instead of saying it was expecting species, it says, I'm expecting either species or common name. Let's go back to the XSD and understand why that is. First of all, we already have a genus called Circus. If we take a look at species, I've made that optional. So it's saying, well, species could follow genus if species is present. But if species is not present, that's okay because I've given it a min occurs here. So in that case, maybe I need common name. So it says I either need species or common name. Now here's a question. Why didn't it say anything about cultivar? Why did it say it's only expecting species or common name? Because of this sequence tag. Because remember, the sequence tag says these elements must fall in this order. Uh, and we'll, we'll add something to that. We'll add an amendment. We'll say these elements must fall in this order if they are required or if they are present. In other words, a species is not required, so we might not have species. It might just jump straight to common name. Okay, so let's continue with our document. Let's see, back to our definition. Is cultivar required? No, not required. 
Common name is not required either. So cultivar, cultivar is like a Fuji apple or a red delicious apple, kind of like a brand name. It has some, it's an apple tree, but it has some characteristics that make it taste like a Fuji, make it taste li like a red delicious. Not every apple tree has a cultivar, which is why cultivar is going to be uh, not required. Common name, we could make an argument that that should be required, um, but a common name, uh, that's kind of, uh, it's kind of like a native language name. So for me, that would be an English name. So redbud would be the name of a Circus canadensis tree. So you could make an argument that common name should be required because every plant should have a common name, but I suppose it's possible that you would have a plant without. Nonetheless, I save, and now let's go back and let's validate our document one more time. So I go to XML tools, validate now, and take a look. The XML is valid. Let's go ahead and fill out a few more details. We'll say species, and we'll say canadensis, which is the species for redbud. And then I'll say common underscore name, and we'll say eastern redbud. And I save, and we do one more validation. Not just one more, I'm sure there'll be many more. XML schema is valid. So you see that this XML document matches well against this XSD, which is describing it. Now, what happens if I invent my own element called foo and I give it the name bar? I save and we do a validation. Is this going to pass? It's not going to pass because uh, the element foo is not declared in my XSD. So it says, wait, I don't know who you are. You are not permitted. So let's go ahead and wrap up the video here because we've done a simple validation. In our next video, we'll take a look at how to do some more complex types, and we will also take a look at some more attributes that we can do to offer some validation. I look forward to seeing you then. Thank you.